DARPA, shaping the future, creating opportunities for new capabilities, strategically, tactically. The mid-70s, the arms race was intensifying. Technology was changing warfare. Advances in Soviet radar, anti-aircraft, and missile technologies were challenging American air power. The director, Dr. George Heilmeyer. Vietnam was still with us, although tapering down to a certain extent. And um, people were concerned about um, air warfare, uh, particularly um, the surface-to-air missile threat. And at that time, uh, the Soviet Union had a very, very large submarine force. And so anti-submarine warfare was another critical need of uh, the Pentagon at the time. Responding to those threats, Dr. Heilmeyer took DARPA in a new direction, building experimental prototypes to test and prove the viability of new technologies. In 1975, he presented six major thrust areas to Defense Secretary James Schlesinger. One stood out, the invisible airplane. It was a radical idea. Experiment with aircraft performance for a very low radar profile. You know, that early morning liftoff of, of the Hab Blue aircraft, the first stealth aircraft, which was demonstrating the principles, that was a very, very exciting morning for me. Because I, I thought to myself, you know, these, this small group of guys, you know, have made aviation history this morning. In just two years, DARPA had produced an entirely new airplane, invisible to radar. Stealth technology was experimented on the ground and on ships, like Sea Shadow. Advances were also being made with the ARPANET. In 1976, the first wireless ARPANET transmission around the world was made from this van. ARPANET was going mobile. Dr. Bob Fossum became director in late 1977. The Soviet Union was still our main adversary. We perceived of it as a substantial military threat uh, in conventional forces but the growth of the strategic and theater nuclear forces was of substantial concern. Each side was in a technology race, each trying to outsmart the other. The technological advances of the past 20 years were building on themselves. Soviet submarines and missiles were becoming more sophisticated New technologies were developing at a faster and faster pace. Dr. Fossum had to make room for new ideas. I divided the square into four quadrants. And in the uh, first quadrant, I had existing missions and existing technology. I tended to reject that. Second category was a uh, very interesting one. Can we find new missions for existing technology? The third category is uh, existing missions, but brand new, rather revolutionary technology. But it's that fourth area, brand new missions, things we'd never done before, and new technology to do those missions. So I used to like to walk around and talk with people. I was going, well, there were some contractors sitting there, some wild-eyed contractors. And so they saw me, and their eyes lit up, and they said, Dr. Fossum, how would you like an airplane that flew for uh, 24 hours at you know, 50,000 feet? And I said, make it a week and uh, 70,000 feet and I'll buy one. And uh, that was the beginning of a program called HAIL, High Altitude Long Endurance, out of which Global Hawk emerged. A change in administrations brought changes in defense policy and changes to DARPA. One of Ronald Reagan's major initiatives managed to eliminate the Soviet threat. The United States began an ambitious defense buildup. New DARPA director, Dr. Bob Cooper. There was an intention from the beginning to spend enough on building the equipment that our forces had 
that it would require the Soviet Union to spend with us if they wanted to stay, stay with us. And it was the intention from the beginning to try to, to, uh, to bankrupt the, the Soviet Union. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. And we went after ballistic missile defense. We went after new ballistic missile offensive systems. Uh, we did a variety of things with conventional weaponry, making uh, conventional weapons much more lethal by accompanying them with intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and precision guided munitions, uh, things of that sort, which frightened the Soviet military hierarchy tremendously. DARPA Science and Technology established the foundation for the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, Star Wars, and the beginning of a new capability, combining information with precision weapons. And so, we drove the Soviet Union into bankruptcy, basically, by making them continue to spend more and more of their gross national product on defense. And I think that finally they, they just realized what they were doing and, and it 